Like it had been a solid maybe 18 hours before the flight had actually left. If you haven't heard, the U.S. Department of Transportation has made some major changes, particularly in regards to canceled flights. Essentially, if your flight is canceled or significantly delayed for any reason, you will be offered a full refund. But there is a catch. I was watching a video from Walter's World about this topic, and it reminded me that back in 2017, I was able to get a flight from New York's JFK Airport to Paris, Charles de Gaulle Airport for just $50, yes, 50 US dollars from New York to Paris. And this was all due to the European Union's policy for air passenger rights. So in this video, I'll be responding to the Walter's World video about the Department of Transportation's new policy on canceled flights, but I also want to tell you all a little story about how I was able to get a $50 flight from New York to Paris and how you can get the most out of this. Last month, the U.S. Department of Transportation announced this new policy. You are entitled to a full refund, and that includes any baggage fees, seat selection fees, or the flight itself. If your flight is completely canceled, or if your flight is delayed by more than three hours for domestic flights or more than six hours for international flights. The EU has a similar rule for any canceled or delayed flights that arrive or depart from, a, from an EU destination. But there's a key difference here. In the US, if you take the canceled or delayed flight, you are not entitled to a full refund. You are only entitled to a full refund if you do not take that flight. Whereas in the EU, even if you get on the flight, if the flight was delayed or canceled, you are entitled to compensation and a full refund. So here's my story on how I was able to get a $50 flight from New York City to Paris, and I hope that you'll be able to do the same. So back in 2017, myself, my mom, and my best friend booked our tickets from New York City's JFK to Paris's Charles de Gaulle and the tickets cost $550 per person. Now, that's a solid ticket price. A little less than, you know, what you might usually pay, but it's it's a it's a somewhat reasonable ticket price. But give me a second. The flight there was fine, you know, we had to deal with JFK's usual shenanigans, the long lines at TSA, and the fact that JFK has been under construction since 1999, it seems. Now, on the way back, we checked into Charles de Gaulle as usual, and we were flying with American Airlines. Now, it wasn't until after the departure time had passed that American Airlines got on the intercom and let us know our flight was going to be 30 minutes delayed. Just 30 minutes. So 30 minutes had gone by and they let us know that the flight was delayed for just another 15 minutes, just, just a little, just need a little bit more time. And then after 15 minutes had gone by, they pushed it back even further. And then another 30 minutes goes by. And at this point, we are an hour after our, after our original departure time. And they continue to push this flight back maybe seven more times to the point where we had gone three hours behind schedule. Finally, they had announced on the intercom that the flight would be delayed indefinitely due to mechanical errors. Myself, my mom, and my best friend had to sleep in the Charles de Gaulle airport. And honestly, I wanted to fight some people because the way the way the airport staff treated us, like it was our fault <laughs> that our that our flight was delayed. So we slept in the airport and the flight actually didn't leave until the very next day. Like it had been a solid maybe 18 hours before the flight had actually left. 18 hours after the departure time and at this point we had been in this airport for nearly 24 hours we got in line at the airport kiosk because we needed to get a new set of seats for this new flight and i remember 
After we had gotten our seats, a flight attendant had said something along the lines of, EU law requires us to let you know about your air passenger rights. And I was like, okay. And I kind of waited for her to like, okay, let me know. And then that was it. She handed us a pamphlet and we waited at the gate to board our flight, praying and hoping that it was not going to be delayed once more. Good thing is that we actually were able to get on this flight as we lined up to give the flight attendants our boarding pass. Again, they said, EU law requires us to let you know about your air passenger rights. I was like, okay, thank you. Second time. Finally, we are on the flight and over the intercom, they say once again for the third time, EU law requires us to let all passengers know about their air passenger rights. So I'm looking at my mom, my mom's looking at me, I'm looking back at my mom and we're like, okay, what's in this pamphlet? So we start reading this pamphlet and we realize, oh, because the flight was canceled, we are entitled to a complete refund plus compensation. Specifically, the EU's air passenger rights states that if your flight is delayed, canceled, or overbooked for any reason, and also if your luggage is damaged or lost, you are entitled to compensation. Doesn't matter if you take the flight or not. So I'm reading this pamphlet, and when I get back to the US, I decide to contact American Airlines because the EU law suggests that you contact the airlines first before seeking further action. When I contacted American Airlines, they were like, oh yeah, girl, you're right. Yeah, we, we did do that, didn't we? Okay, yeah. So what we can do is we'll offer you a little, you know, flight credit for $400. And I did my research and I'm like, no, no. I know that I'm entitled to a full refund. And here you are saying that you could give me a little voucher for $400, not even the full price that I paid, but for $400, you got the, you, you thought. I'm not an EU citizen, but I know my rights, okay? I was determined to get a complete and full refund. But the only problem is that working with airlines as a single individual person is actually quite time consuming and can be costly. American Airlines specifically is known for giving people the runaround when they are going when they are asking for compensation. They will literally delay, 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 even going as far as taking people to court for a flight ticket that only costs a couple hundred dollars. Like, it's my money and I need it now. That's when I decided to reach out to a company that specifically deals with airline disputes. I can't remember the exact name of the company that we used. It could have been AirHelp or SkyCop. I'm not quite sure. But they explained that because we ended up taking the same physical plane, the airline could classify that as a delayed flight and not a canceled flight. If the flight had been completely canceled and we were rerouted to take a different plane, then I would be entitled to a full refund plus compensation. With just a delayed flight, they really could only give me a full refund, which I was fine with. So I went ahead with the website and these companies are great because they get you your refund as fast as possible. But there's a catch. They do charge a fee that I think was about 10%. I had been arguing with American Airlines for weeks at this point. So, so I gave in and I went ahead with the company and they got me my refund in less than a week. No, it was, it was honestly really fast and super easy. I just had to turn, I just had to give them some documents that proved the delay, the flight, you know, what I paid for it. And they were able to give me a full refund of the $550 that I paid per ticket. But when you subtract their fee, the actual money that was deposited into my account was around $500. But that's 
per ticket per person. Although it took about a month for me to get my refund and that was mostly due to me not wanting to go with the company, I received um, $500 back off of a $550 ticket. That means that the total cost of my flight from New York to Paris was $50. And I was quite satisfied with that outcome. So what does this mean for Americans and how does the US's new policy affect flight compensation? Well, for one, I think that airlines are going to be much less likely to cancel flights because they understand that you are entitled to compensation if you are not able to take that flight. And so we're going to see a lot less canceled or delayed flights. They're gonna be on their P's and Q's, at least I hope so. <laughs> Secondly, I think that companies like AirHelp and SkyCop will find more opportunities, more business ventures in the US, and they'll be there to help with any further disputes for things like you know, outside of just the flight refund, but for also things like if your luggage is lost or significantly delayed, I think it's 12 hours for domestic flights. And if it's delayed for 30 hours for interna international flights, you are entitled to compensation. And so I think those companies will be working in the U.S. a little more and maybe there'll be U.S. companies that spring up. Also, there is supposed to be more transparency for the cost of a flight. Everything from baggage fees to the taxes, the the airlines are supposed to be more transparent with that so that you are able to compare and contrast prices and get the best deal. I think there is a way where you can take advantage of both the US's new policy and the EU's air passenger rights policy. For example, if you have a flight from the US to the EU, and that flight is canceled or delayed to a point where you are not able to get on that flight, the US policy would make it easier for you to get a full refund automatically and not have to go through the companies that I had to go through. Secondly, the EU policy makes it easier for you to get compensation if you've had to do things like, you know, book a hotel for the night because you didn't want to sleep in an airport or um, if there was damaged luggages, which is something that the US policy doesn't really cover, um, the EU policy could help you get further compensation for things like that. And lastly, I'm really hoping that this new US policy leads to further regulation for giving air passengers our rights. I would love to see the US model our regulations and our air passenger rights off of the EU's policy. And the biggest catch about this is that the new US policy will not take effect until at least November of 2024. Um, it's not automatic and it's not retroactive. So we're going to have to wait to see what this new policy really brings us, but I am hopeful. So if you're picking up what I'm dropping down, share this video with a friend, please click on the like button below or comment below what you think about this new US policy. Or I'd love to hear other stories of people being able to take advantage of the EU's air passenger rights. It's okay if you don't want to do any of those things. I just ask that next time you take a trip to the EU, think about booking your flight with American Airlines because they are notorious for canceled or delayed flights and you are entitled to that money, honey, okay? EU policy requires us to let you know about your air passenger rights.